Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the opportunity to catch up with Tony Khan, ahead of AW All in London. Once again, live on pay-per-view from Wembley Stadium this Sunday, the 25th of August. We have a great turnout for today's session with Tony, so let's get started. But first, our traditional reminders, please do not ask two-party questions. It'll make it possible for us to get to as many of you as possible. And we'd appreciate you keeping the topics focused on AW All in London. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tony for some opening thoughts, and then we're going to open the lines for your questions. Tony, good evening. Good evening, Jim. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm really excited about this week. This is my absolute favorite week of the year. Uh, it's going to be such a great time here in London, and I'm excited to talk to all of you. Uh, this is a great part of that week, and I, I'm excited to get all your questions uh, uh, ahead of uh, – question and answer part of our traditional session here. I did uh, want to address one thing before we begin. I just wanted to address some reports regarding AEW potentially running an event in Australia. We can confirm that we're currently looking at various locations in Australia to potentially run an event sometime next year in 2025. We'll have more information about this in the near future. 2025 is going to be a milestone year. Uh, just as this is a milestone year, I think 2025, even more great milestones to come. I'm excited to talk to you all right now about AEW All In. And in 2025, we just announced All In will be coming to Globe Life Field next July. And I want to thank our partners at Rev Entertainment, Texas Rangers, Mayor Jim Ross, and that Arlington Sports Commission in Texas for helping to make all that possible. Uh, it's a really exciting time for us, and excited to talk to all of you about what's to come this week with All In, the AEW All In London at Wembley Stadium, just days away. I thought we had a great debut Dynamite in Europe, our first ever UK Dynamite, our first ever Dynamite outside of North America last night, and I thought it was a tremendous show as a go-home Dynamite ahead of this big pay-per-view weekend. I'm really looking forward to the weekend television also, and of course, uh, the big enchilada that is AEW All In. Uh, and with that, Jim, let's start the questions. Right, strong start there, Tony. Here we go. Andrew Bedala from Final Bell Media will lead us off, and I'm going to ask Joe Torres from Contralona to be on deck. Andrew, you lead us off. Drew, are you there? Andrew? Drew, I think you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hey, what's up, Drew? Hey, Tony, sorry, wouldn't let me unmute myself. Thanks for taking the time. Good luck on Sunday. Sure. Congratulations on the over 50,000. I've noticed uh, re in recent interviews, you've mentioned that AEW will be back in the UK in 2025. Considering what you just said and the incredible crowd turnout and enthusiastic audiences, especially last night that we've seen in the UK, it seems like the ideal market to bring more events to. With that in mind, is AEW considering bringing a pay-per-view and television back to England in 2025 or the UK? Certainly on the table. It's definitely something we would consider I absolutely love the UK. I've spent a lot of my life living in England and specifically in London. And I absolutely love it. It's great being back here and it's great traveling uh, in the UK. And in this case, it was our first ever AEW show in Wales and the first time we've done TV in the UK at all. Uh, it's really exciting. And there are so many great cities throughout the UK. Uh, and, you know, I've driven all around London and, and uh, you know, from, from Fulham, uh, not only playing uh, uh, all the great teams here in England, but also uh, traveled to Wales for football, you know, many times. And there's lots of great cities uh, all over the UK. And I know from experience in English football, there are a lot of great towns with really passionate fans and that this is a great place to be. And you see it in wrestling that 
Uh, that crowd last night was just magic, and they were tremendous for Dynamite, and I'm really excited for people to see Collision this weekend with that Cardiff crowd. And it's all a big preview of what's to come this weekend. There's going to be a huge crowd at Wembley Stadium. It's going to be one of the biggest pro wrestling crowds we've ever seen. And it's going to be certainly a historic night for AEW uh, and really, really, really exciting times for us. Uh, not only all the stuff I mentioned leading into this pay-per-view, but what's ahead in 2025. And absolutely, to answer your question, I do think that would be something that would be on the table for 2025, more events in the UK where we've had great success with AEW. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Andrew. Joel Torres from Contralona is next to be followed by Jason Powell from Pro Wrestling Net. Joel. Everything is okay. You just mentioned uh, next year's all in in Texas. Can we have a like a background about how this idea came up to why Texas after two years in a row in, in London, obviously, this this all in in texas being the first event in a big in a big stadium in the united states thank you well we've had some great experiences i think some of my greatest experiences as a wrestling promoter i know some of my greatest experiences as a wrestling promoter have been in texas and i thought that that would make a lot of sense you know all in is this massive event and uh, it's been the perfect place for the first two years of AEW All In at London Wembley Stadium. We absolutely love it here. This weekend is going to be massive, and it shows the scope of this event. For years, people have asked, when is AEW going to bring a pay per view to Texas? And I always wanted to bring a massive event, and we brought the biggest event possible with AEW All In coming July 12, 2025, to Texas. Of course, we're days away from AEW All In 2024. And now fans know what to expect, and I have every expectation we can fill up uh, Globe Life Field just as we've brought these great crowds here in London. And uh, I think that the way it came about, there's a lot of really great people working here. And uh, for a long time, I've wanted to do a pay-per-view in Texas personally. And this made a lot of sense uh, with this opportunity. And Koshe Irby, the COO of AEW and the great live events team here, uh, you know, had this idea. And when I recruited Koche from Clemson University, where he was the CMO and, and had past experiences working in wrestling, this was an initiative he felt really strongly about. And it's something I've always wanted to do as a wrestling historian myself and a, a wrestling promoter. It means a lot to be able to do that. And I can also confirm now officially today uh, as a wrestling promoter in London this weekend that I'm going to be bringing some of that uh, great Texas tradition here to London this weekend, because I can confirm that the Von Erics will be here this weekend. And it means so much to me ahead of a big event like this to have the Von Erich family here, a part of it with us in AEW, because AEW is a family and it's great to have them with us. And going into all in next year, I hope they'll continue working with us. And it's, it's an honor that they had us in their territory, the Von Erichs, and, and great to have them here at AEW all in. London and looking forward to a big year in Texas uh, next year as well. And, and all eyes on London this weekend, too. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Joel. Jason Powell from Pro Wrestling Net is next to be followed by Jim Barcelone from Miami Herald. Jason. Recent head hey, will say. Uh, it seems like you're pretty happy with WBD and Max these days. I I'm actually curious about the exclusive negotiating window. Did you ever run past that exclusivity period? And if so, how much interest has there been from other potential network and, and even streaming partners? It's a very fair question, and I think uh, it's, it's absolutely right for you to ask that. I am in a very uh, exciting time personally and professionally right now with everything happening in AEW. Very excited about the show this weekend, but there's a lot of things happening in the office and uh, meetings offsite and phone calls. And uh, it's an exciting time. And the Warner Brothers Discovery relationship has been very strong for us, uh, including this summer. I was able to go to Paris and spend a lot of quality time with uh, Mr. David Zasloff and Bruce Campbell and the executive team. And uh, there's 
a really great relationship between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery, and it's never been stronger. It's really in a great place. Uh, and as for the exclusive negotiating or talking to other parties, you know, I, I prefer not to get into any of that or talk about it. I think we have a, a really good thing going, and uh, I think we have also, frankly, I believe, I hope, AEW a good relationship with the wrestling media. At least I try my best uh, to be accessible and talk about things when we can. Um, but right now with the, with the company in uh, an exciting time where, you know, there's, a, there's been a lot of reports, a lot of things said, but I do think uh, everybody is starting to get a sense that there's a lot of excitement around AEW as a, as a hot property. It was the number one show on television last Wednesday night on all of cable and satellite and has uh, continued uh, to, to, you know, really not only perform strongly as a television product, but also continue to uh, create huge new revenue streams and opportunities. And also uh, that has just been having great shows and on a string of really, I think, great, great TV shows. I'm really proud of this run of Dynamites. I think since Forbidden Door leading into Wembley, the TV has been excellent in my opinion. I'm really proud of it. And I think it's, there's been a lot of great pay-per-views and a lot of great shows this year. And I know that uh, AEW All In this weekend is going to be absolutely tremendous. So as a as a wrestling promoter and and a creative person in wrestling, I'm very excited about what's happening in AEW. But as a business person, also very excited about growing this business because uh, we have great opportunities out there, and and we're very blessed to work with a great partner like Warner Brothers Discovery that treating us incredibly well in these negotiations right now. And uh, it's a very complex negotiation. I mean. It's, it's not as simple as, as shaking hands and slapping uh, a couple numbers down on paper. There's a lot of things to figure out, and uh, it's an exciting time for us to hopefully uh, create some very new opportunities to grow AEW in exciting new ways uh, and build what we build on top of what we've really done over the past five years. Thanks for asking, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Jim Barcelone from the Miami Herald is next, and I will follow Jim with a write-in from John Powell from Slam Wrestling. First, Jim. Hey, thanks, everybody. This will be really exciting. AW All In, London. It's always a hot crowd there, too. I'm curious because on the card, uh, you have three matches focusing on women, and that's cool. And, and out of that, Rip, Dr. Britt Baker's back, and Mercedes Monet is added, Timeless Tony Storm, Ryan May, what they've been doing, Willow Nightingale, Chris Statler. Camille, that's the one, a blue chipper. What are your thoughts of adding Camille to the roster and even her being a part of this? Well, Camille's a great part of the roster in AEW now, and we love having uh, Camille the Brickhouse here in AEW. Uh, she has been instrumental in Mercedes Monet's dominance since, uh, you know, in particular this past month. And we've seen a lot of interactions with Camille and Dr. Britt Baker. We've seen a lot of interactions uh, with Mercedes Monet. And Dr. Britt Baker, it's an exciting time and exciting program. And, you know, Camille being involved here is great. And like you said, there's a, a lot of great things happening. And I'm really blessed to work with this great roster and the great team we have in AEW. And I feel really good about the shows. I've been uh, really happy about each of those matches you named. And I think uh, it's been a long time in the making. I'm really it's so excited about Timeless Tony Storm versus Mariah May to come to London and a story that's been ripped straight from the West End and uh, a story uh, that has come uh, from uh, the hills of Hollywood to here in here in London, this this awesome opportunity for AEW to uh, have this great AEW Women's World Championship match with Tony Storm and Mariah May and uh, tell this story, uh, Timeless Tony Storm's Rise since last year's AEW All In has been meteoric, and we've seen uh, the evolution into Timeless Tony Storm, one of my personal favorite stars in all of wrestling, and somebody I really uh, believe in, and her former protege, Mariah May. It's been a, a story a long time coming, and it's crazy to think how far it's come in a year, uh, but it's something that I've thought about and wanted to see here at Wembley Stadium in this spot for over a year now. And have and have thought and worked and planned with a our great team, and then to have, uh, like you said, uh, it's it's tremendous to have Dr. Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet, two of the top stars, 
going one-on-one to have the DMD versus the CEO for the TBS title. That's tremendous. And that, you know, AEW all in is the place for these huge dream matches. And that's a match. I think a lot of fans have wanted to see for a long time Two of the top rising stars in women's pro wrestling, Dr. Britt Baker, AEW's original homegrown uh, star taking on, Mercedes Monet, one of the biggest free agent acquisitions ever for the TBS championship. One of them is going to be the face of AEW on TBS going forward. And I'm so excited about the DMD versus the CEO for the TBS title. I think it's a huge match. And uh, we've seen a lot of interest in it from everything on, on TV, Dynamite, Collision this past week, and also uh, Comic-Con and outside of wrestling. So that's tremendous. And uh, Willow and Chris Statlander have continued to... Uh, build that rivalry, the, the former friends. We've seen uh, a lot of great matches, and uh, I'm excited for this. And uh, we'll be excited to see two wrestlers uh, with very little in common uh, with either of them or with each other, and Tomohiro Ishii and Stokely Hathaway involved as well. It should be a great show. I'm really proud of what we're doing in AEW, top to bottom. The women and men in this company, all of them are doing a fantastic job. Uh, and uh, the, the the men and women here are uh, going to put on a great show this weekend with AEW All In, top to bottom. Thank you, Jim. Tony, here's a write-in from John Powell from Slam Wrestling, and then Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy will follow. John's question is pretty simple. How proud are you at being able to highlight many UK talents during the show? Well, that's a great question. I'm very proud. We have some top wrestlers in AEW who are from the UK and have competed extensively in the UK, and it's something I'm very proud of. You know, you want to have those homegrown stars. Just like in the Premier League, there's a, a league of top stars from all over the world competing in this elite sporting league, and you want to have the homegrown stars, and you want to have the top competition, the top stars that come from all over the world to play in the Premier League or wrestle in AEW. It's great to have the homegrown stars too. And here in London specifically, but also all around England and the UK, uh, there's top, top wrestling and some of the most passionate, exciting wrestling fans. I've gone to wrestling shows all over England and I love uh, pro wrestling here. And uh, it was great to have AEW make our debut in Wales last night as well. Uh, and it's great to be able to feature a lot of the great UK wrestlers on the AEW roster. And I think the fans, when we're wrestling, doing dynamites, collisions, rampage, and pay-per-views, the large percentage of them take place across North America and U.S. and Canada. And, you know, week in, week out, you still see top UK wrestlers on the show. And then when we come here to Europe and, and wrestle in the UK, there's – so much excitement when AEW's in, in town or or just in the country, and I think you know it really speaks to how great our homegrown wrestlers are and our our international talent, and uh, that's a real point of pride for AEW. Absolutely, especially when we're here in London and and here in the UK. Thanks for asking. Thank you very much, John. Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy is next, to be followed by Mark O'Brien from Body Slam and Irish Wrestling Entertainment. Amy. Hello, Tony. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Hello? I'm here. Hey, Amy. Hey. Okay, hey. So, okay, so let me make sure. Hey. Hi. So you had mentioned earlier about being a promoter and a historian and a creative mind in wrestling. And to that end, I'd actually really like to dive in a little bit more on Timeless Tony Storm and Mariah May. So this is one of the most anticipated matches on the card. This storyline has become perhaps arguably the greatest women's storyline of all time and certainly one of the best in professional wrestling, captivating fans all over the world. You've drawn parallels with golden era Hollywood movies such as All About Eve, Sunset Boulevard, Baby Jane, among others. Last year at All In, the story really began taking shape with Toni Storm as she started coming out to that black and white movie reel for her entrance. And Mariah May made her debut just a couple of months later. As we begin to look forward to what could maybe be heading to the final curtain call, can you talk about the process of bringing the story to Wembley and has it shaped how you've been developing memorable storylines in AEW across the board? 
Thank you. Thank you for asking. It's personally for me one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. I I think so much of uh, Timeless Tony Storm and Mariah May, and I think that they're going to have a great match. I loved the pairing and working with them, and it's something I'm really proud of. Uh, and when it came time, when that when that fateful day happened for Mariah to flip the switch and make the turn, uh, I thought it was one of the greatest moments ever in AEW and one of my favorite wrestling moments when Mariah turned on Tony at the culmination of the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. And for their match to happen on this huge stage, the biggest stage in AEW and, and, and this grand pro wrestling stage, Wembley Stadium, the sporting mecca, I just think it's perfect and it's the perfect city for the rivalry to culminate in too as one of the world's capitals of the arts. And that's what this story is inspired by. And um, uh, I, I love those films. Sunset Boulevard I saw many, many years ago and was a classic. And uh, All About Eve I saw when I first started living in L.A. It was a movie that a friend recommended to me about 10 years ago. And I watched it uh, before I had a house in L.A. I was staying in the London, ironically, in the London, West Hollywood, actually. And uh, very fittingly and uh waiting uh for uh to, uh to move into a house and then uh, uh uh you know many years later obviously with AEW, and uh we were backstage i can't remember what city i was in but uh it was at a dynamite and i was talking to tony storm and i told tony storm that i saw something here and there was a uh an opportunity to create a new character and it's something that i thought was her and the best wrestling characters are when you see something in a wrestler and you you turn it up and you go past the 10 on the dial, like in Spinal Tap, try to go to 11 with, with that thing and really uh, show the fans that side. And to me, Tony Storm is this just classic personality. And I think she's so uh, elegant and brilliant and uh, articulate, yet she's this tough lady. And she reminds me a lot of Betty Davis in All About Eve. She's much younger, but the idea of having this real hardened veteran who is just so classy and bigger than life. And to me, that, that star of the screen in that forgotten black and white era, that's timeless. Tony Storm, who's timeless, and it could be in any era, but she captures that elegance uh, and that essence. And so that's what I saw uh Tony Storm's character really changing. And this was over a year ago. This was like last summer, probably early. Actually, really, I think it was right after Double or Nothing. And I started to think about because it was all one story. And, I, you know, not only for Tony that I saw this progression, but an opportunity to do something and tell a bigger story. And Mariah is the, uh, the counterpoint in that story. And it was right after Double or Nothing last year when I first reached out to Mariah to come to AEW. And uh, she was very uh, eager uh, to be a, a part of it, not only AEW, but to work in such a, an exciting story. And there were parts of it that I don't think anybody that, you know, necessarily everybody's watched all the films that I was talking about or all the references. So I started working on this and this idea of building uh, this partnership and this mentorship and really introducing Mariah, but then getting the act where, uh, they became an indispensable part of AEW television and really inseparable where you saw Tony Storm, you saw Mariah May and Luther. And, uh, you know, he's a he's an important part of the story, too. And uh, and he's been uh, at Tony's side the whole time. And when you look back at when Mariah debuted, I put Luther in right around the same time by design. And I had uh, there not only because he, he bears some similarities uh, to Norma Desmond's husband in Sunset Boulevard. Uh, sorry for the. Uh, I mean, Norma Desmond's Butler in Sunset Boulevard, uh, and uh, and uh, that um, spoil for anybody who hasn't seen it. It's been you know, it's been like seventy years, so uh, I can't say spoiler alert at this point. But uh, yes, so uh, I think um, it's uh, really, really uh, been a great thing working with them and uh, introducing the references and the stories. But then another person along the way who, you know, it's like if you're coaching a team, you can't coach a football team by yourself. You can't coach a basketball team. You need great coaches that are going to do a lot of work and that are philosophically similar. 
And there are some people I work with on some programs and ideas that, that are good coaches and, you know, that people that I can put with me, good assistant coaches, good right-hand people that, you know, in any sport you need, including wrestling. And in this case, there were not a lot of people. There were not a lot of women and men that had all the references and understood what I was talking about. And probably for these kinds of references and things and tying it to wrestling, the person I knew who actually I hadn't really ever worked on any stories with and wasn't really doing that for us at that point. It was a, was RJ city. Who's the, the uh, probably one of the more uh, articulate and well-read uh, and certainly about the, the cinema, uh, one of the, the best people you'll find around wrestling, certainly. And, uh, you know, if I was talking about old movies and stuff, that would be who I went to. So I went to him and told him I have this big idea. I think there's, I can do this. I have Tony Mariah Luther. I have all the pieces, but, you know, week to week, I need uh, somebody to come in and really be my right hand and, and deal with a lot of the ideas and help me with the writing and help me uh, you know, uh, tie my vision for this together. And he's been tremendous. And the thing is what's made it all work is it played to everybody's strengths. And this is timeless. Tony storm is Tony. Like she's just absolutely this for, for somebody of her young, very young age, it's incredible to have somebody so well-traveled and, and brilliant. I really love working with Tony. And I think that timeless Tony storm is larger than life. And uh, that's like her. That's what she is. And then Mariah introducing a new star to the American television audience. It's not necessarily how we always do it the way we did it. A lot of times we debut people off of their uh, indie gimmick or their gimmick internationally they've done. Or we bring in a wrestler from overseas or another company and try to do a presentation like of what they've done in wrestling. And in this case, it was not Mariah's presentation she was doing in wrestling. It was something totally different. And I think she at first probably was wondering why I wanted to do that. But then when you see the story and the plan, it makes sense. Um, and, you know, mo most people come in to AEW historically, a lot of times will bring people in and, and they do what the fans have seen. If they came from Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling or World Lucha Star, typically we've done things like that. That's what I think makes it even more interesting when you introduce a new character that's completely different from what they've done before. It might mean, frankly, that I have a big plan for somebody like Mariah May or Hologram, in fact. Uh, so, uh, like, and in Mariah's case, uh, to come back here to London and, uh, like I said, one of the world's leading capitals of the arts and entertainment and also pro wrestling and also her hometown. And for the protege to step out of the shadow of the mentor in such a uh, really memorable, indelible way in pro wrestling, when Mariah turned on Tony, I think it's very fitting that they have the match here on this grand stage at Wembley Stadium this Sunday, just hours from now, really, at AW All-In. It's been a long time coming, and, uh, and it's also been one of my favorite things I've ever been able to work on. So uh, credit to everybody involved and to the, the fans who uh, have – really supported it and, and believe in it. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Mark O'Brien from Body Slam and Irish Wrestling <laughs> Entertainment is next to be followed by Ella J, who has a writing question. Ella's from a wrestling gal. Mark? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hi, Tony. Listen, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, firstly, I want to say congratulations. This is two years in a row. You've sold more than 50,000 tickets in Wembley. I'm not sure people on the call will fully appreciate this time of year. All the football teams are back. This is the UK bank holiday. All the kids are going back to school. Incredible achievement. I wanted to ask you, what did it mean to you personally? This is a, following on from last year, where there was a, so many more additional programs and so many more additional pay-per-views being programmed this year across Europe, across the UK. How big of an achievement is it this year to surpass that 50,000 number mark once more? Thank you. That's tremendous. And, uh, and we can do even more. It's going to be a great go home week. And I expect a great closeout. We had a huge closeout last year that was beyond everybody's expectations. And I expect we can continue to do that. And that's what AEW has been doing since the beginning. We've been uh, defying the odds. We've been doing things that have been unprecedented in wrestling, and we'll continue to do that. It's an exciting time to bring that up as we are embarking on such exciting times with this new media rights uh, deal that's going to bring new exciting things to our fans that I'm excited about. And uh, the most, uh, the biggest thing that we have to look forward to is what's just hours away, the, 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 the huge event, AEW All In. 
And for fans all over Europe, for anybody who can make it to London this Sunday, I promise you, you're going to want to be there in person. If you can't be there, it's worth the early start on pay-per-view for all the fans in the U.S. Uh, you know, it's a, it's an NFL-style kickoff. It's like 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. It's NFL hasn't kicked off the regular season yet, but we are all used to that kickoff time, and I think uh, it'll uh, be worth the pay-per-view for everybody who buys it. It's, it's such a great event. And I think that's why it's been able to draw a huge audience for the second year in a row and will continue, I believe, next year and, and for many years going forward with AW All In being this massive platform and great success. And it's a huge credit to everybody in AEW uh, that's involved in that and also to our fans that just keep turning out and supporting us. And here in London uh, and all the fans coming in from all over Europe and all over the world for this event. Uh, it's really proven to us that we made the right choice coming back here. I'm very excited about this event, and uh, this is my favorite place in the world where I am right now. And it's great to be here and excited to bring the best of AEW here to Wembley Stadium in London. Thank you very much, Mark. Tony, I got to write it in here from Ella J from the Wrestling Gal, and then we'll follow from uh, with Riccicino. From Sports Illustrated, Ella's got a question regarding one of the big stars of, of many stars uh, this weekend, Brian Danielson. And she she says that he's had a quite a storied career spanning 25 years. What do you think his legacy is in regard to all elite wrestling? What a great question. I think Brian Danielson has come here and three years he spent with us since his arrival have been a very important chapter in a career that to me is start to finish one of the greatest careers ever in wrestling. I put Brian Danielson uh, as one of my personal favorite wrestlers ever and somebody who I have so much respect for who's uh, built an audience worldwide and had people supporting him before he ever really had that huge international television platform. He was already known and established. And I don't think uh, there's anybody that would work harder or is more respected by their peers. And that's why it's an honor to work with him backstage. It's an honor to work with him offsite. And especially whenever Brian Danielson is at a wrestling show, and especially when Brian Danielson's in the ring or around the ring, uh, we're all very blessed to have him. He's been a captain of this team in AEW. And as he approaches the final countdown this, this Sunday, as we're going into uh, what could be the final ma- match of Brian Danielson's entire wrestling career, just hours from now, certainly I've spent a lot of time reflecting on it. I thought we put together an excellent video package highlighting a lot of Brian's career, including so many things outside of AEW and before AEW was even uh, a possibility. And for decades, he's been doing it at the highest level. I think there's even more of an emotional component because for so many of us who love Brian and, are, and believe in him and are fans of him, like I am and, and I do, I think we all feel like we're living on free time. Like this is all bonus balls for us, right? Because we all thought he was gone a long time ago and then he came back and now it's all gravy. It's like uh, everything he's done has been building on top of this great legacy that for a lot of us, we thought as a, in terms of wrestling matches was probably over a long time ago. And what he's been able to come back and do and be, in my opinion, better than ever and have the run that I think you can hold up against everything he's done and say that it's been the best and that this is the best Brian Danielson. I'm very proud of that. And up to this point, he's continued to excel. He's continued to amaze. But the person he's wrestling this Sunday is a great, great world champion in Swerve Strickland. And we've seen Swerve Strickland uh this is his time, and Wembley Stadium uh, will be his house. And Swerve 
has had this dominant year. And in the past year, uh, ever since last year's AEW all in, he's been wrestling at the very highest level. He's beaten everyone he's faced effectively and has continued to knock down, uh, people at the very top of the business and also had great matches in the process. Some of the best we've ever had in AEW, and that's something the two wrestlers have in common. They both wrestled at the highest level and they both had some of the best matches we've ever had in AEW and the stakes, the highest possible title versus career to have a great champion, putting the championship up against this great career and to have it be at Wembley stadium and have this massive crowd and, and the promise of the drama and the action. And for a lot of us, what we know is going to be a great match and has been a great story on television. I'm very excited for that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been uh, a great chapter in AEW's history. And I also think it's been a great chapter in Brian Danielson's career and I'm really looking forward to AEW All In and the final countdown for Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Rick Achino from Sports Illustrated is next to be followed by Lyric Swinson from Blavity. Rick? Thanks for doing this as always. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, really looking forward to the show this weekend. Uh, I, I do want to ask about somebody who's not currently booked for the show i mean obviously they're safe to assume there's going to be a few surprises in that casino gauntlet so maybe he's there um but there has been a lot of online chatter this week regarding ricky starks uh even some comments that he may no longer be under contract with aew i'm just hoping maybe you can clear some things up is there anything definitive you can tell us regarding ricky's aew status and when we might see him on tv again well ricky's been a great star in aew he's been a champion here and uh has had great matches here, and uh, I think very highly of Ricky. Uh, he's uh, somebody that has been here for several years, and he's under contract in AEW. He's uh, a well-regarded wrestler here in AEW. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Tony? Let's go to Lyric Swinton from Blavity, and we'll follow Lyric with Stephanie Chase from Stephanie Chase on wrestling. Lyric? Lyric, are you with us? No, he lost his audio. Um, we probably need to come back to him. Oh, we lost her? Okay, this is she. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. we, we can get Lyric. We can get her back. Uh, okay. Well, Lyric, if Lyric comes back, we'll get her uh, get her question in, and uh, we can get her another link or something, maybe. Yeah. Let's try Stephanie Chase next, and then we'll try Lyric um, after Stephanie. Stephanie, you there? Jim and Robin, we keep missing these, these good questions. <laughs> no, oh, here's, here's Stephanie. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry. I'm running to get the train. Um, some UK fans were disappointed that Dynamite didn't air live last night in the UK and then was delayed on Thriller. Was there any effort to make Dynamite live in the UK last night and what prevented it? It's not legal for me to put the show on live in the UK before I put it on to the people that pay 97% of the TV rights fees here in Warner Brothers Discovery. I think they have earned the first right of uh, of airing the show, and they have the legal first right to air the show. And it can't, I can't put Dynamite on anywhere before it airs on TBS and TNT, nor should I, because I think TBS and TNT have been a great home to us. Uh, I think uh, Fight has had... Uh, you know, at times some uh, issues in the stream of the show. I would love to do the show at some point, uh, if possible, on ITV uh, and, uh, you know, put the show ideally on at the same time as it's on TBS and TNT. I just can't jumpstart, if it makes sense, our primary media partner because, like, let's face it, in, in pro wrestling right now, those TV rights are a huge, huge component of the business, and it really drives a lot of the revenue, along with huge temple events like this one, right? AEW All In. 
So I guess, Stephanie, what I would say is probably uh, for the live solution, obviously we had a great live crowd. Um, and uh, ideally what I'd like to be able to do is simulcast it, but that would still be very late here. That's like a 1 a.m. start. It's not ideal. So I think for the streaming, uh, you know, this, this is an option. Obviously, there are people that stay up and watch wrestling live at a 1 a.m. start time. I know I have been one of them. I lived in England and I would watch wrestling late at night uh, before work and after work and between shifts a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan who's lived in England a lot, too. So I do appreciate what you're saying, Stephanie, that uh, people would like to see that live. Um, but, you know, it's a big it's a big step for us to, to bring the whole company over here to travel everyone over because we want to do the very best possible event we can in the U.K. with AEW All In and also do great TV for the first time we've ever done U.K. TV here in Cardiff. Uh, and uh, that was a very exciting thing. But, you know, there, there are obstacles to uh, putting it on live. But obviously, everybody will be able to watch AEW All In live either in person this Sunday at Wembley Stadium or on pay-per-view. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Lyric, uh, Lyric Swinton from Blavity. We're going to try Lyric again and then on deck um, with the, uh, Chris, Chris Mueller from Bleach Report. Lyric, sounds like we've got you. Yes, um, I'm sorry about that. Hello, Tony. Um, so last week we saw with the um, introduction of All in Texas, there was a powerful image there. Um, you had um, three black stars um, in the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, Athena, um, TBS Champion, Mercedes Monet, as well as um, AEW World Champion, Swerve Strickland, um, being at the forefront of that announcement, especially since Athena has been off AEW television um, in um, recent years um, on her historic reign in Ring of Honor. Talk about the importance of having those three stars at the forefront when an, uh, announcing an event um, as historic as the first um, AEW U.S. Stadium show at All In Texas? Well, it's a great question. To me, you want to have the greatest stars, the top champions, and the, and the biggest names in the company, and those are some of the great stars. And it was a big deal to have the AEW World Champion, Swerve Strickland, the ROH Women's World Champion, Athena, and, of course, CEO, the TBS champion, the face of our home network. And uh, it was great to have Mercedes Monet there. And, uh, you know, we have these three great champions, and there were a lot of great stars top to bottom. They represented a, a great group that uh, was a tremendous, tremendous way to kick off that press conference. We had a lot of stars top to bottom, uh, and those are three of the really great ones. And uh, they were part of that featured group. And there you have, uh, you know, not only three great champions, three great stars, but I think three great pro wrestlers and three great representatives for AEW and ROH, and in particular what we're doing with AEW in Texas. But thanks for asking. It was, it was obviously very cool and a great photo with uh, Swerve and Mercedes Monet and Athena all together. That's great. Jim, are you there? I apologize. Um, uh, Chris Mueller from Bleacher Report is next to be followed by Connor Devlin from the Westmeath Examiner. Chris. Camille coming in, and you also mentioned Von Eriks. And I'm curious, do you have a maximum roster size in mind when you're hiring these new talents and how do you balance which talents you want to feature on a show as big as all in? That's a great question. I think uh, it is primarily people that have been wrestling on television. It's a culmination of a lot of the biggest stories, just some big examples of some of the big matches on the show. When you look top to bottom, I think you see great things that have been happening across AEW's television. And so there is, a lot of selection bias there. It's definitely uh, a lot of the people featured on TV, the matches, the rivalries, uh, relationships, and uh, these big matches coming up at AEW All In, you see all that. But also, uh, I think we're trying to bring in 
what I believe are the top stars from all over the world, AEW. And as far as the right roster size, it's a great question. It's certainly grown, but so has AEW. You know, what we do across AEW with five hours of television every week now, 52 weeks a year, we, we definitely needed a bigger roster than we did originally when we were doing two hours. You know, that's a two and a half times the amount of shows, and we've added a lot more people because we're doing, you know, uh, effectively uh, 250% more content than we were at the start of this thing, you know, in terms of TV. So uh, for us, it's been really great, I think, expanding this year and having some of these huge free agents come in, and you're seeing them across this card. And a couple of the biggest name free agents in particular with uh, Will Ospreay challenging versus MJF, one of the biggest stars in AEW to have your big new free agent uh, in his home country on the, the national sporting ground at Wembley Stadium this Sunday, just really hours from now. And to have Will Ospreay, the former international champion, taking on the hated American champion, MJF, one of AEW's original stars. And when you have a great match like that, uh, it's so great to be able to bring in a top free agent and have them really wrestling at the top of the company and put them in a rivalry with one of the greatest homegrown stars and, and these two huge names. That's a dream match on pay-per-view and the match they already had that was you know, 59 minutes and about 58 and a half seconds. Uh, that was one of the greatest things we've ever had on television. Uh, I don't take it for granted when people go out there and wrestle for roughly an hour at the highest level, that was phenomenal. And, we get to see Osprey versus MJF bringing it on pay-per-view at Wembley Stadium this weekend. I can't wait for MJF versus Osprey to see again one of the great homegrown stars of AEW and an American star versus a top free agent signing who we brought in, somebody that we scouted and not somebody I've known and watched since before we even launched AEW, and uh, to have Will come in here and challenge. MJF, that's a big deal, and you have a big free agent signing like Mercedes Monet, who's come in, become the TBS champion, uh, been featured across AEW TV, and taking on, again, a top homegrown star, somebody that was there from the very beginning, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and that's a huge match, and uh, to have the DMD versus the CEO for the TBS title at AEW All-In this Sunday, that's awesome. Uh, and these are, to me, exciting matches, exciting rivalries, and they've been great stories on television. And if you're watching the shows, I think less and less people are saying that about, you know, that, that, that uh, they want to see more stories because there's so much story on the show. And I think if you're really watching it, the people paying attention have seen that, and, and, and it's been really something that we've gotten so much positive feedback on how great uh, the flow has been on our shows, especially this Forbidden Door, it's gotten even stronger as we built towards AW All In. Our track record this year on pay-per-view, I think is spotless. It's flawless. I think we've had top to bottom our best of pay-per-views ever this year. And to come here with this card in this setting, it feels like it's set up for us to come in and have a huge success story with AEW all in this Sunday. And I'm really excited about it. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Chris. Connor Devlin from the Westmeath Examiner is next. And Connor will be followed by Aruta Vagoshal from Sports Keto. Connor? For Sunday. And I just wanted to know, uh, should we expect any returns or debuts maybe for the gauntlet match on Sunday? Well, it's going to be a great match. As we know, the number one participant, the first person coming to the ring is the former international champion, Orange Cassidy. And uh, Orange, Orange Cassidy has never been a world champion in AEW, but it's uh, something that I think everybody would be interested to see. And you know who the first person in the match is. You've heard some of the big names clamoring to get in the match. Of course, uh, you can expect uh, some of those big names lined up, but the crazy thing about this match is you never know when it's going to end. It could end at any time. It's sudden death. So 
you know Orange Cassidy and one other great star are going to start this match out, and you know that I'm going to keep sending stars out. It's uh, a randomly drawn entry and at different intervals, and that's what makes the match so exciting. And it's, in my opinion, it's one of the best new matches uh, to come into pro wrestling in a very long time. And I've been able to bring it just this year to two of my hometowns and two of my favorite matches I've ever been able to work on with so many great wrestlers and to have the Casino Gauntlet match in Daly's Place in Jacksonville for the shot at the international title and to have the Casino Gauntlet match at the Forum in L.A. for the shot at the world title and now to have this Casino Gauntlet match for an AEW world title shot at All In this weekend at Wembley Stadium. These are my home buildings and my home cities. And to have my favorite match and something that I invented in Daly's place out of necessity and is probably, uh, like I said, my favorite match idea I've ever had. And it came to me in our old Daly's place office where there's a lot of magic. I, you know, I think I, I probably should sometimes think about moving my office down to just work out of Daly's place. And, uh, in to the facility down the street um but yeah i uh i absolutely love it and it's a great match and it's gonna be very exciting there'll be great wrestlers in the match and and there's a lot to look forward to in the casino gauntlet and, and up to bottom on AEW all in but the only thing that's for sure is orange cassidy's number one and then there's going to be somebody else out there and then this match could end at any time so get ready thanks connor Aruna Vagoshal from Sports Kita is next to be followed by Luke Lewis from the Newport City Radio there in the UK. Hmm. Aruna? Excited to see MJF excel again in a new character. If you could share with us your thoughts on how this character change came up the backstage reaction, how MJF has been involved in the process, that's it. It's a great question. I think this new iteration of MJF is not my favorite person. He had some very uh, not kind things to say about me uh, on TV, but that's okay. Uh, And I think MJF is a great wrestler and a huge star and big box office attraction. And we've seen his true colors. I think that uh, MJF was enjoying the adulation of the fans. And uh, then when the fans maybe questioned him uh, and his friendships fell apart for the first time, maybe we were getting a look at a different MJF last year. But I think uh, he was not able to, uh, he was not able to maintain that uh, level of kindness and that level of uh, humility and uh, that kind of person that he was trying to be. He couldn't sustain it, and this is what he is at the end of the day. At least uh, this is his dominant nature, and it's a different presentation. It's a different MJF, but it's MJF at his very best, and I can't tell you how many people have come up to me in different walks of life, uh, different places, whether it's the gym or uh, Hollywood uh, offices uh, and charity dinners, but people coming up to me and saying, like, I'm really glad MJF is a bad guy. And I like seeing MJF like a, as a, as a real asshole. And that's what he is. And that's what, uh, so I get that everywhere I go and people bring it up to me all the time. Even my dad said it to me, like, you know, and uh, that's probably the, uh, the highest uh, demographic you're going to get in terms of uh, <laughs> the quality of their feedback and their, and their spending power. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I think uh, it's been great for AEW having uh, MJF back. And he's a great American champion, frankly. And it's going to be an interesting international title or an American title match, however it comes out, with Osprey versus MJF at Wembley Stadium. I'm really excited for this weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Rudeva. We've got time for probably Luke Lewis, and I think that's going to have to wrap it up. We're almost here at the hour. So, Luke Lewis from Newport City Radio, you get to bring us home. Hi, Tony. Uh, thanks for taking the time to obviously talk to us tonight. So, as you just heard, Luke Lewis from, from Newport City Radio here in Wales. Great show last night. Obviously, you've announced all in for next year's going to be in Texas. 
for when you come back in 2026 has already been announced. Will that be in London or could we potentially see following the success of last night's show at the Italian Arena in Cardiff? Could we potentially see all in come to Wales, go to the Principality Stadium, the Cardiff City Stadium, maybe from Rugby Parade down here in Newport? I had to get that in. Uh, thank you very much, Tony. It's a great question. We had a great debut in Cardiff last night, but London is a home to me and a home to AEW, so there will always be an AEW presence in London. I'll always try to bring big AEW events here to London, my hometown here in the UK, but I also love this country, and I, like I said, I've driven up and down and across uh, to most of the football grounds, and I absolutely love this place, and I know there's so many great cities across England and Wales and all over the UK. And, uh, you know, so far we've only done AEW in England and London and in Wales and Cardiff, but there are great opportunities in cities, but I can promise you uh, next year, 2026, I'm never going to forget London. London's always going to be a big part of our plans and uh, AEW in London is really important to us. All over the UK. That was a great debut last night. Believe me, I'm, I think there's a lot of opportunities across the UK, but I'll never stray from London. We're always going to want to come back and bring AEW here to London. That's why we're so excited about this weekend. It's just one of the greatest places for anybody, any sport. But to me personally, this is a real home and I just love being here. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Luke. Tony, um, any closing thoughts before we close today's uh, press event and look forward to seeing you on Sunday? Any, any, any final thoughts? Well, no, it's great. This has been Love this, Jim. It's fantastic. It's our biggest event uh, in this great place. I've, you know, I've spent a lot of time in London with you, Jim, and, and you know this energy and what a great place this is firsthand. And, uh, it's just a magical time. And uh, it's also a different time of day for me than I'm used to with these. I'm used to talking to all of you in the afternoon with, for my circadian rhythms and doing it here on uh, UK time. Uh, this is uh, for the, you know, the rare time that uh, our all media call cuts into my dinner. So I'm going to go uh, across the street to places I've been with you many times, Jim, and I'm going to get some food. Yes. Uh, and I really appreciate all, all of you uh, uh, supporting us, supporting AEW. This has been fantastic. Thank you, Jim and Robin and, and the whole staff and Danny and the whole uh, media team and everybody that uh, made this possible. Uh, and I, hope, I can't wait to see all of you in person this weekend for everybody coming to Wembley Stadium. If you can't come to Wembley, please check out this pay-per-view. It's going to be a great show, and it's just hours away. This is going to be a great wrestling weekend and a great bank holiday over here in London. All right. <clears throat> thank you, Tony, and thank you, everyone. It is a little bit after 9 o'clock where Tony is, so we're going to call tonight. But uh, as always, we will be distributing an audio recording to all attendees shortly. And from everyone at AW, I'm just going to echo Tony our deepest thanks not only for today, but for the past five plus years. Uh, what an amazing ride. So we, we hope to see you at Wembley Stadium or, or perhaps even Craven Cottage this weekend in London. But if not, do join us for the pay-per-view on Sunday morning or afternoon, wherever you're maybe watching from in the United States. Best wishes, everyone. And once again, thanks for joining us today with Tony.